Our next speaker comes to us from the Detroit Moratorium Now Coalition, and uh, he's he's going to speak. Uh, the topic we talked about on the phone, and he's got some leeway on this, was was budgets and bankers, the deep roots of of Detroit's financial peril. And so without further ado, I will turn the podium and the mic over to Abwe Azikowi uh, from Detroit. All right. What a, a somewhat retired or semi-retired from Wayne State. Yeah. Uh -huh. But maybe you can say a little um, more about, yeah. about yourself, but okay. the, the mic is yours. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, I wanted to, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, uh, Jim Anderson and the Edgewood United Church for holding this forum and organizing it. It's very, very important that we have this public discussion about Public Act 4, the Emergency Manager Law, or as it is called in the city of Detroit, the Dictator Law. I just want to also uh, commend uh, Reverend Edward Pinckney and Dorothy Pinckney for the great work they're doing in Benton Harbor. Benton Harbor is like a city a sister city of the city of Detroit. Uh, we have similar histories. Uh, Benton Harbor at one point was a great industrial uh, city like the city of Detroit. Uh, we have majority African American populations. At the same time, uh, we have a history of racial polarization, racial segregation, and a history of profound political struggle as well. Uh, people in Benton Harbor are fighting to resist the emergency manager law. And in the city of Detroit as well, we're fighting very hard against this law. We don't feel it is a solution uh, to the economic crisis that's facing the state of Michigan, the majority African American cities in the state of Michigan, and particularly the uh, city of Detroit. City of Detroit, the city of Benton Harbor represent microcosms of what is wrong with urban life in the United States in the 21st century. Now what is the purpose of the emergency manager law? Well according to our analysis, the moratorium now coalition to stop foreclosures, evictions, and utility shutoffs. We feel that the only real purpose of the emergency manager law is to ensure the dominance of the financial institutions, finance capital. We have the whole notion that the city of Detroit is in debt. First of all, they told us several months ago that there was a $45 million shortfall in revenue in the city of Detroit. Uh, they were telling us this in November and December, and that we may even have payless paydays in the city of Detroit. They said this may happen in April or May. All of a sudden, it may happen in January. Then, of course, they told people in November, well, hey, maybe it may happen in two weeks. The sky is falling. Yeah. So we have to immediately appoint someone to review the finances of the city of Detroit. And who do they appoint? They appoint a man by the name of uh, Andy Dillon, who is a Democrat, and he's, he was appointed by our Republican governor, uh, Rick Snyder, who comes from private industry, and uh, he is being projected, even in the corporate newspapers in Detroit, as some type of savior of the city of Detroit. If you look at the way in which, and I, you know, I'm in journalism now since um, I you know, have moved on from the education field, and if you just analyze his photographs in the papers, and how he's projected, and how they airbrush and Photoshop uh, his illustrations. It's very clear that this man is being projected as some type of uh, messiah uh, for the uh, people in the state of Michigan. $45 million shortfall. Well, people said, well, why is that such a crisis? Then they tell us it's a $400 million deficit uh, that the city of Detroit owes to the financial institutions, and I'll discuss that a little bit later. Then after that, they said it was a $1 billion deficit. Then a little bit later, they said it was a $6.4 billion deficit. Then we heard it was a $12.8 billion deficit. And I've also heard quoted that it's a $20 billion deficit. Well, how are they calculating these deficits? A lot of it is future projections of what we may spend, what we won't take in. And you can do that in your own individual household. If you say, for example, your mortgage is $1,000 a month, uh, your utilities cost may be $500 a month, cost for clothing, uh, tuition, books, uh, if you have children and so forth. Yeah, if you project that for the next decade 
or the next two decades, or the next three decades, yeah, you'd probably be a million dollars in debt. Would they appoint a financial manager to run your household? Is that the question? And where are these figures coming from? And who, in fact, is behind this whole notion of emergency management for these uh, large municipalities, many of whom have majority African-American populations? It was interesting, the report came out uh, in December by a group called the Citizens Research Council. They issue annual reports uh, in, uh, in relationship to finances for the city of Detroit and other cities uh, in the state of Michigan. And uh, if you look at the board of directors and the advisory uh, council of the so-called Citizens Research Council, who are they? There are people from Chase Bank, there are people from Bank of America, there are people from Comerica Bank, there are people from the, uh, the transnational corporations, there are people from the foundations that are financed by the banks and the transnational corporations. And what are their solutions? Their solutions is to do what? Bust the municipal unions. They're blaming the workers for the crisis that was created by the financial institutions. This, this is what they're doing. All of the discussion that's been going on in the city of Detroit over the last several weeks in the corporate newspapers say, are the unions going to take concessions? Their salaries are too high? Give me a break. Municipal salaries are too high. They're causing the deficits. People in the city of Detroit haven't gotten a raise probably in two decades. They've been getting pay cuts almost every year. Cuts in benefits. They're saying, oh, their, their uh, health insurance programs are too lucrative. Their pension funds are much more, much more expensive than what we can afford. And where did these benefits come from? They came from, from a result of the struggles that have been waged by working people in this state and in the city of Detroit for the last eight decades. Since the 1930s, when you had an upsurge in general strikes, when we had the Flint sit-down strike here in the uh, state of Michigan that won the eight-hour day, that won recognition for the UAW, that won vacation time and health care benefits for workers, that they could sustain their families, and pay for the education of their families. All of this is under attack right now, not just in the state of Michigan, but throughout the United States of America. And this is the struggle we have to wage. And this is the point of departure that we have to uh, engage in when we discuss this whole notion of emergency management. What else do they want? Well, they want to seize the $6 billion in pension funds that have been accumulated over decades by the municipal uh, unions in the city of Detroit. It's a self-funded uh, pension system. They want to take it over. They, want it. they have another group called MERS, uh, the uh, Municipal Employee Retirement System. They had a scheme a year and a half ago in the city of Detroit to take over it, but the unions came out in force and it was defeated. They want to get their hands on the pension funds. They want to take our jobs uh, from us that we've struggled for over the last uh, several decades. And at the same time, where are the banks and the transnational corporations in all of this? And in my last part, I just want to talk about some potential solutions uh, to the economic crisis in the city of Detroit and in the state of Michigan. First of all, as I mentioned before, we're not responsible for this financial crisis That's right. at all. That's right. The banks are responsible. The transnational corporations are responsible, and they're the ones that should pay for this economic crisis. We bailed out the banks three and a half years ago to the tune of over $700 billion. If you just count the public monies that went to the banks, and this bailout is still going on on a daily basis. If we look at the Federal Reserve funds that were turned over to the banks, some people estimate it as high as 14 to $20 trillion. That's our money as well. Our deposits, the money from our pension funds, and other resources. So why are we being accused of being the source of the economic crisis because they want to beat us back even further to ensure even greater profits for the banks and the transnational corporations. So what we're calling for, first of all, is the restoration of the $200 million to $500 million in state revenue sharing that's been stolen from the city of Detroit over the last decade. This has not even been discussed by the governor's office or by the uh, Detroit News or the Detroit Free Press. That's our money. And even if we have to take them to court, if we have to wage a major political struggle, we should go after those dollars. Snyder now is claiming that the state has a billion dollar surplus. Where did that come from? Well, last year they cut education by a billion dollars. They cut off 40,000 individuals uh, who were on welfare 
uh, 25,000 children who don't have a home, uh, may not have a home now, may not have food, may not have food stamps, of course, you'd have a so-called budget uh, surplus. Uh, if you gut uh, public education, if you gut social services, if you lay off firemen, police officers, school teachers, demand uh, dr draconian cuts in salaries and uh, health care benefits, just two more points. We also are demanding a bailout from the federal government for the simple fact that they bailed out the banks for hundreds of billions of dollars and even trillions of dollars, and at the same time they bailed out Chrysler and General Motors some three years ago as well. Why not bail out the people who built Chrysler, who built General Motors, and who built the banks into these formidable, powerful financial institutions? The outsourcing of jobs, is that the workers' fault? That they can make more profit by setting up facilities in Mexico and other parts of Asia? That's our fault? We have to pay for that? And who profited from these economic decisions and the economic restructuring of the United States? Also, we're calling for a moratorium on foreclosures, evictions, and utility shutoffs. It's no accident that the banks who extended all this credit to uh, homeowners, uh, to small businesses, knowing that people would not be able to pay them back with these so-called creative financial instruments, where they actually had credit default swaps, where they bet it that you would not be able to pay your mortgage, that you'd lose your home, and they actually profited from that. Nobody's been indicted. Nobody's gone to prison. So we're calling for a program to keep people in their homes so they won't be evicted. Because if you don't have people in their homes, how are they going to pay taxes? And of course, the public finances will deteriorate. The final thing we're calling for is a moratorium on debt service payments to the banks. We owe the banks absolutely nothing. We bail them out. And at the same time, all we're calling for is not a non-payment of debts, but a renegotiation of the debt service to these financial institutions. Emergency managers are only there to ensure that these financial institutions get paid. Yeah. So I want to, just in closing, I want to announce that we're having a national conference on May 31st at Central United Methodist Church in Detroit to demand a two-year federal moratorium to stop foreclosures and evictions. We're also going to be talking about the uh, demand for a moratorium on debt service to the banks. It was done in the 1930s. Uh, Mayor Frank Murphy, um, they couldn't pay civil servants. And he refused to pay the debt service uh, to these financial institutions that were strangling the cities. This is discussed in the latest issue of the uh, Michigan Citizen. Uh, it's at michigancitizen.com. Uh, yours truly uh, put this article together entitled Detroit Needs Unity and Mass Struggle to Defeat Attempted State, State Takeover. Thank you so much.